Today we're going to start talking about the difference between equalities and inequalities like we saw before, but this time we have two variables, so we're going to end up with lines and a two-dimensional graph. So I'm going to go ahead and graph this one. This is something that we've done in the past. We see that our slope is one-half and our y-intercept is two. So we come over here, our y-intercept is two, our slope is one-half, so we're going to go up one and right two, and we can go down one and left two, and that gives us a nice line right here for that equation. Now, what is a line? A line is simply a picture of all of the possible solutions to an equation. So anywhere along this line, if I pick a point, this point, this point, this point, it will work for those equations. Let me show you really quickly. So we have y equals 1 half x plus 2, and I'm going to pick the point right here of 2, 3. And we're going to test it out and see that it works for this. So my y value is 3, 1 half, and my x value is 2 plus 2. So let's calculate here. 1 half times 2 is 1. So we get 1 plus 2 on that side, and 1 plus 2 indeed does equal 3. If we pick any point along this line, even the in-between points right here that are harder to find, then it will end up with something like this where it works. So this is just a picture of all of our solutions. Well, what does our picture look like if instead of equals we have greater than? And so I'm going to pick two points and illustrate that with these greater than and less than. The two points that I'm going to choose to plug in like I did a second ago are 2, 5 and 2, 1. So we're going to see what happens when I put in a point above and a point below to our equations. All right, so I'm going to keep this, and I am going to leave out the equal sign so we can fill that in with what it is, but I'm going to test out the point 2, 5. So we have 5 here, and then we have 1 half times 2 plus 2, and I'm going to fill this in in just a minute to see which one of those it fits. 1 half times 2 is 1, so we get 1 plus 2, which is 3. So we have 5 and 3, and the, the symbol that goes here is greater than. So the point up here above is a solution when instead of equals, we have a greater than symbol. And that's going to be true for every single point above the line. And so um, when we see greater than, our y values are greater than, we're going to shade the area above the line to show that this is the solutions for when our y value is greater. All right, let's test out our next one. It's going to be 2, 1, and see what happens with that. So we have 2, 1, that gives us 1, and over here we have 1 half times 2 plus 2, that gives us 1 plus 2, and 3 again on this side. And we can now see that this is less than, 1 is less than 3. So that fits if instead of a greater than symbol, we have a less than symbol. So that's going to be true for all of the points down below the line here. Everything down here will fit when it's less than. So if we're graphing the less than, we're going to shade all of the points below to show that this is the area that works. Okay. Let's put a few things together. So when it's equal, this is everything on the line. When our y value is greater, this is everything above the line. So we are going to shade above the line. When our y values are smaller, like this, this is everything below the line. So we're going to shade everything below our line. Now, when we have a greater than symbol, there's another detail we need to address that the line itself doesn't work because the line comes from when they're equal and we're not allowing it to be equal. So I need to be able to see the line so I can tell where it is above and below the line. But I want to show that the line itself doesn't work. And we're going to do that by changing our line into not a solid line, but a dashed line like this. And so I usually decide this before I draw the line right here. I'll say, hmm, we're not allowing it to be equal, so I'm going to make a dashed line. So we're going to shade above the line, and then the line is dashed. All right, so that's the difference between the picture of this graph versus these graphs. We make the line dashed and we shade above or below. 
We do, however, have two more inequality symbols. They are greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. When we add that equal sign, now the line works because the line is where it comes from, equal. So if we have equal, we are not going to make the line dashed. We're going to keep the line solid like we did before with equals. Let's do one more example, then we'll sum everything up and put it in our notes. All right, so with this one, we're not in slope-intercept form, so I'm going to rearrange this so I can have a little bit easier time of graphing. We'll subtract 3x on both sides. That gives us negative 2y. It's greater than or equal to negative 3x plus 8. We'll divide by negative 2. Let's divide both these by negative 2. We get y. And over here we have positive 3 halves now and a negative 4. And we need to remember when we divide by a negative number, our inequality symbol switches directions. So now it is less than or equal to. All right, let's graph that. So our y-intercept is here at negative 4. Our slope is 3 over 2, so we're going to go up 3 and over 2. And then we're going to draw the line, but before I draw the line, I'm going to decide, is it a dashed or a solid line? And in this case, we're allowing it to be equal, so the line itself works. So I'm going to make it solid. If this was not there, I would have made it dashed, but it is there. So we're going to make it solid, and then we're going to decide, should we shade above or below? Well, our y values are smaller. The smaller y values are found below, so we're going to shade underneath the line right here. So everywhere underneath this line works, and we can see the area where we don't shade is the area that does not work. All right, let's sum up the symbols. When it's greater than, we shade above, and the line is dashed. When it's less than, we shade below, and the line is dashed. When it's greater than or equal to, now the line works because we're allowing it to be equal. So our line's gonna be solid. Line is solid. And then greater than, we get values that are above it, so we shade above. And less than or equal to, the line is solid again. And we shade this time because we want smaller values, we shade below. All right, and if you remember these things, then graphing inequalities will be very quick, like graphing lines. We can use whatever form we want, but I find it nicest in slope-intercept form, so I would recommend solving it to put it in slope-intercept form like this. It makes it a little easier for me to see what's happening. Thank you very much.